morning and happy Resurrection Day, as well as happy day 12 of the Living Out God's Amazing Challenge, uh, Amazing Plans Challenge. I am Tamara Doss. I will be with you for the next 30, 40 minutes, uh, sharing a little bit about day 12. I'm going to wait for some people to get on. Hopefully they will. Today is actually easy. Easter. It is Resurrection Day, and so I'm sure that everybody is busy. They've already been to church probably more than once. Good morning. Good morning. Say hello when you show up. I'm so excited that you are here. Uh, God bless you on this beautiful Resurrection Day, and it feels appropriate to share this. So before we got started, before I went live, what did my... I found it appropriate this bottle of anointing oil was given to me by Pastor Lori Bryant of Water of Life Church, and it actually came from the Holy Land, and so I was realizing today as I was putting it on my hands and getting ready to anoint the message and the word and technology and all that, that on this day it came from, hello Christina, say hello to me, good morning, happy Resurrection Day. And so I found it so appropriate. Uh, everybody who's getting on, please say hello. Please share this. And yes, you've been to church three times already, and here you are again. Share it on your page, please. Good morning, Linda. How are you? Happy Easter to you, too. Share it on your page. Share it with some groups, anybody who wants to hear the Word of God today. And we're not preaching um, an Easter or a resurrection message, even though I will tie it in and out, because that's what God does when we are on point. Um, but today is about day 11 love unconditionally, excuse me, day 12, love unconditionally. And God is so good the way he uh, formulated our April challenge in with the month of April and Good Friday and the Holy Week. And today, of course, Resurrection Day, where loving unconditionally was why he paid the ultimate sacrifice. And so if he has set that example for us, that we can also move forward in that example. So what I wanted to show with you, share with you about this anointing oil is as I was anointing my hands, I, you know, I always anoint based on like whatever the Father tells me. And a lot of times it's, it's in a cross in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But today he had me circle my hands three times, both of them. And as I was rubbing them together, getting ready to anoint, I realized why he did that. He had me draw a circle three times because of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. However, it was the opening of the tomb and the tomb is empty. Isn't that a beautiful? The Lord, without me knowing it, had me anoint because the tomb is empty today. The tomb is empty and so I drew three circles on each hands before I realized why he was doing that. But he wanted me to remember that as I teach today, and he wants me to remind you as I teach you today, that the tomb is empty. He has risen. The prophetic word has come true. Today is the most important day. I say in Christian history, but I also say in history period. Can I get an amen for that? Because it is the truth. It is the most important day. I'm so surprised so many people are here. How awesome is that? It is Resurrection Sunday. I know you guys have been to church, so thank you so much. Today, we'll be tying in Resurrection. As he just shared with me, the reason why he had me anoint in three circles on each hand was because the tomb is empty. The big circle, as we are looking in or looking out of that tomb, it is one big circle. And Jesus is no longer there. He has risen into heaven and ascended with his father and the entire prophetic word has come true. So good morning to everybody. I see some new names here today. So I just want to um, let you all know what we are doing here for those of you, especially that are new and to those that are coming back for the 12th time or even any time less than that, welcome back. We are doing the, technically we are doing the Living Out God's Amazing Plans Bible study, which is not yet published. But we are working out of the 30-day challenge, and we are doing the Bible study in 30 days as opposed to eight weeks at a church setting. And so today we are in day 12, love unconditionally. And I just love the way that Jesus ties in this study every day. And so we are going to learn not only about how we need to learn to love unconditionally because it's part of living out our amazing plan, but watching Friday to today, Sunday, that he has risen. It was all about his unconditional love for us, and he is teaching us how to unconditionally love others, not just personally in our space, in our circle, but also to the stranger and also to the enemy, which I will be teaching about today. So let us begin with a prayer. <clears throat> Father God,
God, Lord, I have already anointed these hands. And Father God, I see the revelation in which you have anointed these hands, Father God. And so I know those words are not just for me. Father, I know those words are for each and every person uh, on the anointing. And so, Father God, yes, first and foremost, we recognize that today is Resurrection Sunday. Today is the day that everything that you taught us, everything from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, Father God, today is the day that it all is true. It has all become a fact. It is all um, a fact that we can rest our life on, our hope on, our trust on, our promise on, Father God, and that we can live out our amazing plan. So Father God, for anybody who turns on this video today, anybody who clicks, watch. Father God, I pray for them right now that you would capture their heart, Father God, that you would capture their mind, Father God. And whether or not they continue to listen, Father, I pray that you capture them to um, draw them in and speak to them and, and share your love and encouragement with them, Father God. And Father, as we um, teach today, I pray right now, like Jeremiah, Father God, that your hands would be put over my mouth. Father, and you would tell me the things to speak, Father God. If I've prepared anything that is not of your word, Father, I pray that you just take it away from me and you give me the new words to speak, Father God, because I trust in you. Father, I pray for each and every person that even though it's Easter, even though we are celebrating resurrection, even though we have a, a beautiful, wonderful dinner, and Father, we may not be gathering in big numbers in big families today, but Father, we are gathering with our families. I pray that not only will we watch and listen and that we'll eat and celebrate, but Father, that each and every person listening today will take 15, 20, preferably 30 minutes in the presence of of you, Father, and that they will quiet themselves down and that they will activate the plan that we lay out for them today to learn to love unconditionally, Father. And so um, let it be said that we declare and decree today for your glory, Father, for your glory, that we would teach people how to love unconditionally because you first loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hello. Good morning, Kaylee. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day to you. So uh, Kaylee, especially you, you are a first-time participant who had groundbreaking um, revelation when you did it in March with Troy leading. So let me know if you've been watching any of these. Do you like it going live every day? Because this is the first time we've ever done this. First time. First time. First time I've ever done it. And God is moving powerfully. So let us get started. Let me review, not just for everybody, but I really want you to be able to capture what this Living Out God's Amazing Plants Bible Study is all about. And I want it to be um, carved into stone for you so that you can recall and recollect and reclaim it when you fall into trouble. You Something that has been said either by myself, by um, Maria last week, or by Sandy next week, or by Troy the following week. Something will capture your heart and it will be like cement that you can stand on. So um, in the book, we are actually, and I'm kind of cheating, but we are in the Bible study, we are working on the treasure map key. And if you see, I'm sharing the stage today with my treasure box, because that's the key that we're giving you today. We're giving you this amazing treasure box key to open up the treasure box, which is what we did yesterday. And um, we are right here on chapter three. Master key three, treasure box key. And the Bible verse for this particular five days, so yesterday and then the next four, including today, is Proverbs 4.23, one of my very, 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 very favorite verses. Uh, because it's so profound. And that is guard your heart above all things because everything you do will flow from it. And then I found a couple of other verses that I thought were amazing, uh, not, not verses, versions of Proverbs 4.23. And it says, um, put away deception from your mouth. Keep your lips from perverse speech. Guard your heart with all discipline because your life will flow from that spring. And then in the uh, another version, it says, guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. In another version, it says, watch your hearts with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Don't you love this? And then another version, it says, um, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. 
because from it is your source of life. And um, here's another one in the Good Times translation. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. And then another one, guard your heart above all else because it is the source of life. Um, so that is our Bible verse for this entire master key. Master key of the treasure box, matters of the heart. And if you were with us yesterday, you did an activation plan where you went before your father and you cleansed your heart with the gentle cleansing of your heavenly father with the Holy Spirit who gently cleansed your heart and he helped you to go back and find all the things of uh, unforgiveness in your heart because we were learning on day 11 to forgive freely, to forgive freely. And so we, hopefully if you did the exercise, you went out and you picked out all of the things that you need to forgive. All the anger you have in your heart, all the envy you have in your heart, all the pain you have in your heart, all the hate you have in your heart, all the greed, bitterness, betrayal. You needed to go in and search and ask for forgiveness of those sins that you have committed against other people as well as um, learn to forgive those who have trespassed against you. So you trespassing on others, you need to ask yourself for forgiveness, as well as those who have trespassed against you, you need to also forgive those people who have trespassed against you. So that's what we did yesterday. So hopefully your treasure box is clean and shiny like mine. See, no hard, dirty, black, rocks in there and guess what if today you discover that somebody upsets you all you have to do is call upon the name of your father and he will renew your spirit he will remind you and give you a new heart and you can pluck out that one blackness and give it to give it to the lord and say oh geez should i say this kiss off devil <laughs> Kiss off, devil. Come on, you guys. Give me, uh, give me a high five. Give me an amen on that one. You can totally go and get a new heart from the Lord. And then you can tell the devil to go and get himself a new life because he's not invading yours. He's not taking over yours. He's not going to kill, steal, or destroy yours because you know that the power of God can help heal all of those things that are painful and hurting in your life. So uh, what can you expect today? So I'm going to be talking about day 12 Love unconditionally, and you can find that on page 119. Did I read that right? Yep, 119 of your book, The 30 Day Challenge. If you have it, wonderful, please follow along because right in it is your journal. Let me flip to it real quick. In it is your journal, and that's where you're going to activate your plan, your lesson today. That's where really the transformation occurs. Your transformation does not occur uh, by listening to me, to, 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 to listening to wisdom and knowledge. Yes, that is critical. That is important. There is wise counsel in a multitude of counselors. However, your real wisdom, your real transformation occurs when you sit in the presence of your Lord. That's what this challenge is all about. This is what this Bible study is all about. That's what this message is all about, is get into the presence after we teach today. And the next, uh, what are we on, day 12, the next 18 days, go into the presence of the Lord and write down all the things that he is writing. Uh, this Bible study is formulated off of the vision that God gave me of Habakkuk 2.2. Write it down in big, bold letters so those that read it can read it on the run. Good morning, Dr. Rosanna. It's so nice to see you. God bless you. Pray for every person on here with me, would you please? Uh, everybody, please say hello to me. Say good morning, Tamara. He is alive. He is risen. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know because we're learning today about loving unconditionally. And let me know if you feel the unconditional love of Jesus Christ dying at the cross on Good Friday. And today he is risen and the prophecy has come true. Give me a thumbs up, a high five, a hallelujah. A he is risen, so I know you're here. So um, we're going to talk about day 12 today. And it's on page 119. And then we're going to start reading from 120 when I get there. There you go. He is risen. Praise God. Praise God. So uh, let's break down a little bit about what you can expect from day 12. 
I want to tell you something really interesting. I love the way that God, I'm going to get the treasure box out of here. So I love the way that God talks to me. Today, uh, this morning, as I started praying over this and going to grab my book and I open up to day 12, Love Unconditionally. And then I, see if I can catch it real quick, quick again. And then I go to, um, darn, here we go. In the Bible study book, I go to key 12, love unconditionally. Okay? I want you to focus on the word unconditionally. And I'll tell you what I want, why I want you to focus on it, because it's one thing to love. But when we don't give back in reciprocal the love that we've given out, sometimes we get a bitter heart, and then we got to start dealing with bitterness. We got to start dealing with anger, frustration. Okay, but today we're focusing on learning to love unconditionally. Good morning, Erica. So nice to have you join me. Hey, Dan. Hey, everybody else. Good morning. Good morning. And so, um, that threw me off. Okay, love unconditionally. The reason why God took me to this today is because not only are we going to break down the word unconditionally and learn to love unconditionally without expectation, but God showed me today that in this book, there are 30 days, 30 keys, 30 days, and every one of them has a certain size font. This is so small, and yet this is so large. This is how much... I believe God loves you and he loves me. Today he showed me, hey Tam, did you recognize that in all 30 chapters that you have written in both of these books, this is the only chapter where the word unconditional is so big. It's so big. It's the biggest word that I wrote in all of these chapters that he told me you had to um, make it smaller font. It's the only word in this book and in this Bible study that is smaller font than any other word. And he showed to me that. The reason why is because my love is so big. My unconditional love is the biggest love you will ever find. And so he showed me that today preparing. That as we celebrate Easter and we celebrate this uh, last day of Holy Week, that his unconditional love for us, which is what we're going to be learning about in day 12, is so big. It is the biggest one that I, in my book, I had to change the font in order for it to fit on the page. And I, I kind of had this revelation that, you know, we as human beings, good morning, Linda, good morning, everybody. Say hello to me, please. Let me know you're here. And Sandy, Maria, I see you're here. If you guys could write the Bible verses down for me. The first one is our master key uh, uh, three, the treasure box key Bible verse is Proverbs 4.23. And then I'll get to the other one for day 12. Uh, where was I? <laughs> oh, that in our human condition, because we are not God, God is. And God's unconditional love for us is the biggest love there is. But we in human form, we with a fleshly heart that is easily hurt and we, we get deceived by the enemy where Jesus did not and could not get deceived by the enemy. Sometimes we find ourselves getting deceived by the enemy. And so what happens is our love becomes conditional and it gets smaller and smaller, just like my font on the page. I know this is kind of a weird correlation, but I pray that God reveals to you what he was trying to speak to me today. In our human condition, this paper, we have to shrink our love because it's conditional. But he wants us to live in an unconditional love like his because his is the biggest unconditional love there is. And so today on day 12, <clears throat> our memory verse is Luke 6, 35. And it says in the NIV, it says, But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he, God, is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. That is what our lesson is all about today. Day 12, learning to love unconditionally like Jesus. I'm going to read on a couple of other versions um, because I just find that all the different versions are so important. And so in the message, it says this. It says, <clears throat> I tell you, love your enemies. Help and give them 
uh, it just says help and give. Help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way that our Father lives it towards us. Generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. God, our Father, is kind, you be kind. That's the message version of today's memory verse for day 11, Love Unconditionally. It's Luke 6, 35 and 36. Another um, version, because, you know, when I read the first version, it says uh, the wicked and the evil, that God even loves the wicked and the evil. I'm like, mm, that's pretty harsh. That's pretty harsh. But it's for a purpose because God wants us to love unconditionally. Just as I shared yesterday when we were learning about forgiving freely, how Jesus in Luke 23 uh, nailed to the cross, being mocked and beaten and shamed and laughed at, and just crucified till every breath came out of him. He said, please, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Well, he's loving and teaching us how to love our enemies. But today in Luke 6, 35, it says, I tell you, love your enemies. Like we witnessed him yesterday on the cro uh, Friday on the cross doing but in another version, I read this. This is the contemporary English version. It says, but love your enemies <clears throat> and be good to them. Love your enemies and be good to them. Lend, give, and help without expecting to be paid back. Then you will get a great reward and you will be true children of God in heaven. He is good even to the people who are unthankful and cruel. Now, that one spoke volumes to me because I don't always think of people as uh, wicked and evil. I, I honestly don't. I don't even people that hurt me and people who um, have betrayed me and people who have trespass, trespassed against me. I don't really look at them as evil and wicked. Those, those words are so harsh to me. However, the words unthankful and cruel, oh, that one rang true. I do know some people that can be unthankful and cruel. And then God tells us in our Bible verse today to love our enemies, love those people, because God loves people that are unthankful and cruel. And I love this because if you actually go back a verse in um, Luke uh, 6, 34, it says, And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that you? What credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to repay, be repaid in full. So today's uh, lesson, today's challenge, today's key principle that we're opening and unlocking with the master key for the treasure box where all of our treasures go, matters of the heart. We're dealing with matters of the heart so that we can find freedom. Today is a critical day in learning to love unconditionally. Because as I just said, in Luke 6, verse 34, it says, let me just read it again because I think it is so critical. Are you a sinner or are you living a righteous life, following after Christ, learning to reflect the love and unconditional love of Christ? Because if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, now remember, repayment doesn't mean in cash value, in financial reward. It doesn't mean, you know, that if I lend you... Um, toilet paper. How's that one for a good example? You know, in three years, people will watch this YouTube video and think, what in the heck did she just say? But hello, today toilet paper is a really big commodity. <laughs> and so if I lend you toilet paper, I don't expect for you to give me toilet paper back. I give it unconditionally because I know that it is a valuable commodity today. Because it says, what credit is it to you if you give and you expect payment? Because even sinners lend sinners and they expect to be paid back. So I, I pray today, I, I feel like praying right now. So Father God, I pray that this speaks to people that are listening uh, right now, that are participating and those that will, will view it later, you know, today or anytime, Father God, for eternity as it's reserved and saved on tape. Father, that we'll really check our heart. And I'm really speaking to myself as well. Father, as we give and we serve, whether it be in a formal stance at, at church and in ministry, Father God, as we serve those that are less fortunate, Father, or I find sometimes it's even harder with those that we love inside our circle. 
Father, especially like sometimes our husbands, our wives, our children. Um, Father, that we, we give so freely and we love and we go above and beyond. I mean, and today is such a great example of Easter. I'm sure we all got up earlier to get ready, to get dressed, um, to watch our service, to cook a meal, to prepare, to plan. If you're doing a Easter egg hunt or Easter baskets or doing something special that we have gone above and beyond to love today, to show love, to show love of our own heart towards those families that we love, but also to show the love of God today. But how many of us can honestly say that we do it without expectation, that no matter how they respond, no matter whether they tell us how delicious the meal is, no matter how much they recognize the time and the love and the attention that we've put into the preparation and the planning and the activation of doing it all for them, how many of us will be able to say that we will 100% never expect a thank you. Yeah, we would like a thank you, and, and it seems appropriate, it seems polite, but how many of us are expecting it? How many of us are doing today and all the activities that go with it and hoping and expecting a thank you? Thank you, you're so awesome. Look at everything you did for us today. That may not happen, and so that's what today's lesson is all about, is it's a sinner who lends and gives and spends time helping the other sinner, the other people with the expectation that they will be repaid back. And so today is to give freely, to give freely and to love freely, to give and love unconditionally without expectation to be repaid back with word, time, compliment, money, gratitude, appreciation, not today. I love that. I love that. I was looking for my other verse, but I can't find it. And here's verse 36 after Luke 6, 35 through 36. It says, be merciful just as your father is merciful to us. So he set the example for us. All right, let's go to the book. If you're following along on day... 120. I'm going to read a little bit about what today's lesson is all about. So today we are going to learn. This is your activation plan. This is the teaching straight out of the book on page 120, 30 day challenge, which is the Bible study we're doing, living out your amazing plan. And so today we are going to press in to the Lord. We're going to begin to learn to let go of all expectations of love, of giving love and how Okay, this, this one's hitting me in the heart today. <laughs> this is one I truly struggle with, and it's, it's not with people outside, it's with people inside. So if you're just tuning in, you heard me talk a little bit about that. That was me, I'm teaching myself. And um, God is like, mm, did you hear that? This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna learn to let go of all expectations and love. And I, not names of people that are on today, but just names of friends that I know. We've had these conversations with one another and these struggles are real. When people don't love us the way we love them, it hurts. It brings pain into our heart. Sometimes it brings anger into our heart. We get bitter, we get bitter. And you know what, sometimes we even feel like we've been betrayed. We act, the mind starts taking over. The enemy gets in our head because if we haven't put it on our helmet of salvation, the enemy starts talking to us and saying, see, they don't love you. See, they don't appreciate you. See, you're not good enough. You're not worthy enough. You didn't even do a good job. And then the enemy starts twirling in your head and telling you evil things and your thoughts go and you become unforgiving of even their acts of not loving you the way that you think that they should love you. And so we gotta learn today on page 120, second paragraph, we're gonna learn to let go, literally. We are gonna go before the cross. We are going to go to the cross that he sacrificed it all for us, that he gave us the forgiveness and the ability to come before him <clears throat> to lay it at the cross and not pick it up and to learn to recognize and love unconditionally. We are going to learn 
to remove our expectations. And I love that as I just read it because remove is the activation plan. We're going to go in today and our activation plan is we are going to learn to remove. You know how we went into our treasure box? How we went into our treasure box and we went and removed all those black hardened stones of negative emotions and negative um, things that we've been holding on to that are taking up room in our heart. We're going to remove our expectations of people to perform for us and to love us in a certain way, the way that we deem love, the way that we deem perfect, the way that we deem the right way to love. And again, our memory Bible verse is Luke 6.35 where it says, but love your enemies, do good, and help, and hope for nothing in return, and your reward shall be great, and you will be God, uh, children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. And remember, one of the versions that I read, which was so powerful to me, was the ungrateful and the, what was the other word? Oh my gosh, the unthankful and the, oh gosh, I gotta find it. I can't move on without it. <laughs> Can anybody remember what it was? It was so powerful. Oh my goodness. I can't, I can't remember. Ungrateful and, oh, was it unthankful? Anyway, I'm going to put it up there. Don't you love? Somebody loved me because I couldn't remember. What was it? It was so powerful. There it is. I found it. The word was cruel. So even when those people are ungrateful or even cruel, we're going to learn to love unconditional. Amen, Tina. Thank you for talking to me. Come on, guys. Talk to me. Tell me you're there. Tell me you're getting a word. Tell me if you have a problem like I just confessed to you that sometimes you struggle with loving people, especially the people that we love the most, the people that we put in so much effort, so much time, so much thought. And men, I know you do it too, but women, I know as mothers, oh my gosh, we are in every moment of our life thinking, how can we make our children's life better? How can we make our husband's life better? What can we do that they would, that they would love? You know, what can we do for them that would feel so special? And so we especially need to work on loving unconditionally, not acts, not gifts of um, service, but acts of unconditional love. Be encouraged that God has gifted us all with a heart of love. And as humans, we need to be in search of how to love ourselves better first so that we can love others better. Now, I don't want this to be a study about learning to love. Christina, I'm so happy you made it. I don't want this to be a study about learning to love ourselves like in an egotistical way, but this in a realistic way that we cannot love others if we do not love our, ourselves first. And as I was studying this today in preparation for you, God had me circle right here. I want you to see it. Oh gosh, do you see that? Hurt people, hurt people. As I was reading this today, and it said so that we can love other people better, learn to love ourselves better so that we can love others better. Good morning, Dan, nice to see you. Happy Resurrection Day to you. We are talking about loving unconditionally today, and I am on book on page 120 of my book, The 30-Day Challenge, and I am speaking of the fact that we need to learn to love unconditionally, and when we can truly remove expectations of the way that we love people, when we can activate that plan by getting in the presence of the Lord, and He can remind us of when and where and how and why and who we're doing this to, then we can be taught how to change it, how to remove it, how to be restored and redeemed into the heart of unconditional love like Jesus. And so God had me, as I was saying, that we need to learn, our, learn to love ourselves better. My first thought was, I don't want anybody to go and love yourself and focus on yourself. I want you to start there and I want you to heal within. And once we're healed, then we have to reflect outwardly to the real purpose and that's so that we can love others better. Because have you ever heard the saying that hurt people hurt people? It's the truth. Hurt people hurt people. And so if we do not learn to heal ourselves, to learn to love ourselves, because remember at Amazing Life Ministries, that is our second goal is to learn to embrace ourselves. When we can learn our first goal, which is to recognize who we are and whose we are, then our second goal at Amazing Life Ministries is to teach people how to embrace themselves. 
And embrace means to love, to hug, to love who you are. And when you can learn to truly love who you are, not in an egotistical and not it's all about me way, but I love who I am in Christ. I love who Christ created. I love who Christ formed, even in my imperfections. Then we don't carry shame and guilt and we don't carry our, our pain and our hurt and all these stones of forgiveness that we um, dug out of our treasure chest yesterday, that we cleansed ourselves and we dug those rocks, those hard, those hard, crusty black stones that are in our heart. When we can learn to remove those through activating that plan, we can learn to love ourselves better. We can learn to recognize our value. And tomorrow in this master key of the treasure box, we're gonna learn to go and unlock embracing our worth. Same concept. We're gonna peel one more layer back in the master key of dealing with matters of the heart, finding freedom. Freedom is learning to love ourselves better so that we can love others. So that we are not hurt people hurting people. We are not broken people breaking people. We are not unredeemed people help, not helping others to become redeemed because it, because it is healed people who heal people. It is um, restored people who restore others. We want to become healed and restored people and loved people so that we can love and heal and restore others. Does that make sense? Somebody gave me a like, give me an amen or yes, absolutely, good word. God is speaking to you. That is God. As I continue on, um, on this page, on page 120, it says in Timothy 1.5, we learn that the goal of this commandment of loving, which comes from a pure heart. Isn't that what we're doing right now as we are cleansing our heart? and we are dealing with matters of the heart, we are digging out the stones, we are making our treasure chest pure in heart. There is no blackness and darkness. Good morning, good afternoon, Karen. Nice to see you, happy resurrection day to you. That is exactly what we're doing here in 1 Timothy 1.5, what he says, that it comes from a pure heart. We gotta cleanse and purify our hearts. We gotta get out our sanitizer. We gotta get out our sanitizer and our cleansing cloths and we got to go in there and we got to spend time removing those things that are not of God so that we can live with a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith a sincere faith that's what I'm working on is a sincere faith and that's why God when he asked me to write down everything I've learned and to teach it to other people in this book uh, God teaches me every day. He taught me right here before I was speaking to you. He came and told me again, Tamara, that's you. You still have to work on learning to love unconditionally to your husband and your children. And I'm sure they're back over there in the room listening to me right now. And they're going to bring it up when we sit down for Easter dinner and say, yes, let's talk about learning to love unconditionally because that's where sincere faith lives. When we can learn to love unconditionally without expectation, without being paid back, without people loving us in response to the way we're loving them. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And that's why God's love is a big deal. God's sacrifice on Friday at the cross, sacrificing it all for us is a big deal. Today that he resurrected into heaven with his father, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because his love is unconditional for us. You know, and I just want to speak to the center, which hello is all of us. But you know, we don't know who's gonna view this video today. We don't know who's gonna view this video today. And you might be saying to yourself, this is the word God just gave me. You are saying to yourself, yeah, but you don't know what I did. Yeah, but you don't know the sin and shame that I'm carrying. You don't, you don't know what I've done. You don't, you don't know that I've had an abortion. You don't know that I've had an affair. You don't know the words that I speak to my husband or my family or my children in private. You don't know what I did as a teenager. You don't know the sinful life I lived as, as a youth, as a teenager. You don't know how I have rebelled against God. You don't know the things that I have taken God's name in vain. I have accused him and I have literally crucified him myself for living in a life that I wasn't happy or content with or that I didn't think I had the things that my friends had. That might be you, that might be, you might know somebody. This word is for them, that God's love is unconditional and that he loves us no matter what. Hello, Jeff and Patty, thank you for joining us. So excited to have you here. And so that might be for, for you, the center. We're all sinners. 
And you may not have confessed every one of your sins, but God already knows your sins. And so we need to get to our knees and we need to confess every single thing that is in our heart, every single sin that has come upon us. That's what this 30 day challenge, living out God's amazing plan is all about. It's about peeling layer after layer after layer after layer, getting into the presence of the Lord, hearing his voice, getting your journal out and writing down in big bold letters all the things that God is speaking to you about what you need to do to rectify, restore. He's already done it all at the cross. But then what we do is we go pick up everything and we go carry it with us. And this book is about learning to lay it all at the cross that if you can hear it from your heavenly father day after day, key after key, burden after burden being removed, we can learn to live in true freedom. So I pray that that spoke to you. If that was you, that, that you believe that, yeah, you believe God loves you, but you still think there's a condition tied to it. I'm telling you that you are being lied to by the enemy. There is no condition on God's love. God's love is unconditional. He asks you to make him Lord and Savior, and he will come and reign in your life. And his love is unconditional and will cover. His blood spilt at Calvary on Friday. His love spilt at Calvary, and it covered every single sin, every single thing that you have done wrong. Every single debt has been paid. So receive that gift. We continue on on page 120 of the book. Romans 5, 8, and it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. This is what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even in our sins, Christ died for us. And you know what? This is why we have to learn to love unconditionally because Christ didn't just die for us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for every human being while they were yet sinners. And I know today with the pandemic that we're in and, and the political um, division that is going on in this world, that today is no different than the days of Jesus roaming this earth. With the fall of leadership in Bab Babylon and in Judah and Everywhere, in every era, in every generation, corruption, sin was occurring. And yet he died. And yet he died while we were sinners so that we could receive the gift of forgiveness, that we could receive the gift of redemption and restoration and reconciliation with our Heavenly Father. And that when we receive that gift, that we want to use that gift wholly every day and learn today in day 12 of the Living Out God's Amazing Plans Bible Study to learn to love unconditionally. For those of you, I've seen a lot of new names today, actually. And so for those of you that are joining us and, and you don't know what we're doing, we're doing the Living Out God's Amazing Plans Bible Study. And today we are on Master Key 3, which unlocks the treasure chest. It's the treasure chest. See the treasure chest with all the goodies in it? We're dealing with the treasure chest, chest where our heart is. It's the matters of our heart. It's where we store all of the greatest memories and, and amazing things that have occurred in our life. But we also store up all of the pain. All of the pain. All of the pain and agony and hurt and unforgiveness. And we hold on to those things. And it's our job that we have to go in and we have to activate that plan with the help of the Holy Spirit. And we have to go in there and we have to cleanse and we have to clean and we have to remove. And we have to get in the presence of the Lord and say, remind me, Lord, remind me, Lord, show me, show me, show me, speak to me, tell me, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. And we have to get in there and we have to today learn to love unconditionally. If you haven't, if you like what you hear today and you're like, my gosh, it's day 12. I got to get out of here. I can't do this. I'm, I've already missed 11 days. That's a lie of the enemy because today is day 12 and it's an important one. But guess what? Every single day that we learn to spend in the presence of the Lord, that is a critical element, a crit critical time to live, to learn out your amazing plan, live to, to learn to live out your amazing plan. So 
Go get the book if you can. I know it's day 12 and you may not get it till it's too late. Um, yes, I, I want you to have the book because the book's got everything we're talking about. It's got the journal right in it for you. But if you can't uh, get that, I made an ebook for the first time available uh, on Amazon and you can get that and you can get it instantaneously. At least you can view it, look at it, and I think you can print out the pages in, in your journal and you can write on it. And don't let the enemy lie to you that if you can't get any of those, you don't have the money or you don't have the time or you don't want to, don't let the enemy lie to you. Get a piece of paper, get a pen, get a journal, get anything you can write on. Get your Bible and get into the presence of the Lord and we'll teach you. We'll teach you the things that we're writing in our journal and you can do it with us right beside us. So if you want to you wanna get the book or the journal, go to my website, www.godsamazingplans.com. Right there they are. They'll take you to Amazon and you can get them. If not, get a book, get a Bible, or excuse me, get a piece of paper, get a journal, get your Bible, and come activate with us today. Okay, so let me, let me move on. I am going to share with you a little bit about your actual activation plan. Um... So here's our challenge today. Here's our challenge. Here's my activation plan. Here's my challenge to you. Here's what I really want you to do today. We're going to take action today during our prayer time. 30 minutes of silence, quieting our souls, getting in a, in a, in a, a spirit of gratitude. We have no better day than today to get into the spirit of gratitude and get in sync with the day that the Lord has made for us. Remember the anointing he gave me, showing me the tomb, the circle, that the tomb is empty, that he is risen, that everything he told us, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it is all true. It is all true that today is the day that makes it all true that he is risen. The prophet, the, the um, Messiah was born. He was created and formed and walked on this earth for such a time as this. He modeled. He showed us the way. He showed us what a righteous life looks like as a human being. He sacrificed it all. He prophesied and told them what would be happening. And today is the day that the prophecy has come true. And that, my friends, is what you can bank on, that everything is true. Everything is true from Genesis to Revelation. Now, we're still in the midst of that book because Revelation has not come true. But what you can bank on, and I know many of us are talking about it today, are we close? Are we close? Only God knows. God is not going to tell us ahead of time, but he has already given us signs. He's told us. He spoke about it. If we read, if we read, we'll find out what it will look like, and we'll be able to recognize when right is wrong and wrong is right, and we'll know that God is coming and that's why we need to be bold and courageous. That's why we need to get ourselves right, as we've already learned, that the heal heal others, that the redeemed help others be redeemed, the restored help others restore. If we're still hurt, we're continuing to hurt. If we're still broken, we continue to break others around us. If we don't know how to love unconditionally, we are not loving others unconditionally. We're not teaching them about our Heavenly Father. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn to go take action. And in that prayer time, I'm going to have you write... In three columns, you're going to write down the name of the person who you want to love unconditionally. You're going to write down the action that you're going to take to love them unconditionally. And then the no expectation column, we're going to pray over that in a moment. And this is what I want you to do. So for those of you that are doing this activation plan on a piece of paper, um, I want you to write that down. I want you to draw three lines or two lines, make three columns. One, write the name. Two, the action or the activation plan that you're going to take. And then on the three, you're going to write no expectations. Why did I put that third column there? Because it is critical that we learn to remove our expectations. So who am I going to love unconditionally? What am I going to do to show them unconditionally? And what am I going to make sure that I do not do and that I'm going to recognize and remove if that spurs up in my heart? So once we do that... Um, 
Okay, so what, what we're going to do is once we write that down, I want you to, de to go into prayer today. I want you to get your Bible and I want you to get your challenge, your journal, your piece of paper. And I want you to, to lay your hand. I want you to reach to the heavens and ask for your Heavenly Father to anoint your hands. And I want you to lay down your hand on your book, your Bible. And I want you to pull down the power of the heavens and the earth. And I want you to anoint your book. I want you to anoint your book and I want you to anoint your head so that you can um, understand the things that God is going to speak to you. And I want you to anoint your ear so that you can hear the Spirit of God speak to you. And I want you to anoint your heart so that you can hear and feel and understand those things that God is trying to teach you about today, about the people in your life, those that are either known or unknown, those that are either um, like, you know, homeless or those that are orphans, those that are widows, those that are sick, those that um, are in your community that need help, single mothers, um, single fathers, foster kids, adopted families, you name it, the population is mass in who we can love unconditionally. But also the circle within, sometimes we think we're already loving them, but the truth is it's kind of easier to love strangers populations populations easier unconditionally because we don't know them and so we don't actually expect for them to do anything back for us but it's hard when we are loving people that are in our family that we know and spend time with all the all, all day because those people we're going to see and well by gosh they better say thank you <laughs> we're going to see them tomorrow and if 24 hours are gone by and they still haven't said thank you for what you've done you know, that's where the enemy starts saying, see, these people are ungrateful. See, these people don't recognize your value. They don't even have a clue what you've done for them. That is what we're going to remove from our life. That is the thought. So we're going to put that helmet of salvation on that Maria spoke about last week in our actionable intelligence. So the enemy can't tell you that stuff. We're going to um, gird up and guard up so that when the enemy tries to speak to us, we can't hear him or we won't hear him. Or in the case that you do hear him, we're going to learn to recognize truth from lies, good from evil. All those things that Maria taught last week. And then what I want you to do is I want you to really pray and say, God, reveal to me those people. And then I want you to write their names down. Write all their names down. In column one. Boom. Okay, and then in column two, I want you to write, and you know what, you can see, well, I write big because I, I've done this so many times, but then leave space, okay, I gave you plenty of pages, leave space because you might have lots of things you're going to do for them unconditionally, but then go into the second column, the action to take, and then I want you to lay your hands on it, and I want you to pull down the heavens, I want you to pray down, pull down wisdom and knowledge and discernment of what God, not what you naturally think, but what you get from God supernaturally. What action does God want you to take? Write it down. And then I want you to pray over all of it. And then that third column, which I believe is the most important column, which is no expectation. And you'll see if you forget on page 125, here's some key words. I want you to use words like free. This is a free gift. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. I'm not expecting payment of time, talent, treasure, or appreciation back. It's just a free gift I'm giving them. I want you to write down like gift. This is a gift. Something I am giving to them. It's a blessing. No expectation. I'm doing it without thought. No payment. And those are the things that I want you to write in no expectations. I want you to write words that will remind you today to love unconditionally like Jesus loves us unconditionally, that he doesn't put, put stipulation on our love back for him. And how do we know that? Because he loved us be, with, before we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners. In um, Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his love for us while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He didn't wait till we were free and clean and loving him the right way before he did it. He sacrificed for us even while we were still sinners. So I hope you understand your activation plan. I'm so thankful on Easter Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, that you guys joined me and that you shared. If you haven't shared yet, please share this on your page. Share with them. 
and uh, let them know. If you can't view it today, you can view it again. But tell them to join us. Join us for the 30-day Bible study of living out God's amazing plans. 30 days. Who does not have 30 days? Now, we are on day 12. We have 18 days left. But, hey, they can go back and view those on their own time. But who does not have 30 days to get their hearts right, their heads right, get into the Spirit of God, united with His love, His grace, His mercy, His forgiveness, His understanding of who they are and to embrace who they are and to go and live out their amazing plan. It is a great time, April 2020, in the midst of a pandemic, uh, a global pandemic. It is a great time to do this Bible study because there is no time like the present that we need to seek refuge and hope and strength and courage and peace. peace. So now is the time. I'm going to pray you guys out, and tomorrow I will see you for day 13 at our regular time, 10 a.m., and uh, we're going to be unlocking. I'm going to still be talking about the treasure key, and then we'll be still dealing with matters of our heart, finding freedom as we learn to embrace our worth. Very important day. So good morning, uh, Rosie and Maggie and everybody who's joining. So I'm about ready to pray us out, but you can go back and re-listen and then share and do your activation plan for today. So Father God, Lord, I'm going to anoint them as I, um, as I go out. And as Father God asked me earlier, I'm going to anoint in the circle. He did this to me earlier without me knowing. And then he revealed why he did it in the circle three times for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But the circle represents today the tomb is empty. The circle of the tomb as Jesus exited as Mary and others entered into the tomb, they were baffled by the fact that the tomb was empty. And God reminded me as today, the Living Out God's Amazing Plans Bible study is on day 12, loving unconditionally, that that's what today is all about. It's about loving unconditionally. It's about today. It's about Friday on the cross, sacrificing and giving up his one and only son for whoever believeth him will have eternal life and live in heaven with our Heavenly Father forever. We will have eternal life, but we are still here on earth and that we can receive his unconditional love today that every time we falter, we fall down, we fail our God, that we can remember that God loves us unconditionally. He says, that's okay, child. Get back up and do it again. He searches our heart. He knows our motivations. So, Father God, I take these anointed hands of today's promise of unconditional love that the tomb is empty, Father God, and I pray a great blessing that would pour over their heads and their hearts, Father God. Father, I pray over their hands today for the writing of the message. I pray over, Father, their hands and their pens, Father God. I pray over their papers and their notebooks and their books, Father God, that you would draw them in, Father God, and that you would speak to them a precious and timely message of unconditional love today, Father God, that you would show them ways that you have loved them unconditionally when we didn't respond the way that would have been appropriate, that would have been the way that we would have wanted others to respond to us. Father, that you would remind us gently, that you would cleanse our heart gently with that gentle uh, cleansing cloth, Father God, that it is not abrasive, that you would remind us the days that we did not respond in love and kindness back to you and gratitude, where we were ungrateful, where we were unthankful, that you would remind us, Father, and then you would show us the people in our lives, those that we know and we don't know, Father God, those in our immediate inner circle that we love the most, and those that uh, we love from afar, those that we love in, in nursing homes and in the homeless shelters and at the food banks and in our ministries and um, just on the streets that we encounter, Father, all of those that we would learn to love unconditionally. And Father, from this day forward, Father, I pray a great anointing over their heads that as they seek you today and that you teach them to remove, Father God, those, 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 um, those conditions that we have put on our love and on those that we love with our life, with our thought, with our time, with our preparation, with our planning, and with our actual hands and feet, Father God, that you would remove the conditions of our heart, that you would remove the conditions of our love on people, Father God, and that you would have us uh, reflect the unconditional love of you, Father, as Father God, and that you would help us to reflect 
the unconditional love, Father God, as your son, Jesus Christ, as he sacrificed it all for us. And Father, that you would teach us to even reflect the unconditional love of the Holy Spirit, who gently, kindly reminds us. He's our comforter. He's our healer. He's our truth counselor. Father, he directs us and he guides us. And as he does that, he does it with the unconditional love, constantly guiding, directing, comforting, and providing healing to us. And so, Father, we just pray for um, a nation to become those people, Father, that are righteous and living a righteous life and learning to live and reflect more and more of you. And what better characteristic than to learn to love unconditionally on day 12, Father God, that we would, we would reflect that righteousness into the world, Father God. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, praying you all out. You guys are all ready to go and go into your activation plan. Your activation plan in the book real quick. And I didn't have it out. Sorry about that. It is found on day 119, but your actual plan starts on page 122. Go into the journal. If not, we instructed you on how to write down your journal. Be blessed. God bless. And may you and your family be restored and redeemed on today, where today is the truth. May it, may it just grab a hold of your heart where you fall to your knees and that you praise your Heavenly Father and that your life transforms. Because today is the day that it has all come true. And that you can build your home and your house on this firm rock and foundation till eternity. Until we spend our life in eternity with our Heavenly Father. Bye, guys. Happy Resurrection Day. See you tomorrow at 10 a.m.